We've heard some good and profitable things concerning the will of God and submitting to that will. How the Lord has revealed to us what He's determined, what He's going to work out. And how he, what he, he does not do what He does based on man's personal needs or man's wants, what man's doing. Rather, He does things in accordance to His own will. So I'm going to exhort you with a number of things that involve this will of God that we heard about. And that first is to know the will of the Lord. And this is found in Ephesians chapter 5, verse 17, which reads, Be not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. Before you can yield to, what, to that will, you must first know what that will is. And we've heard many things in the assembly here as we gather quite frequently, things that God has determined to do, things that God is doing, things he's going to accomplish. So I encourage you to grow in that knowledge, take advantage, read what the Lord has said, hear, hear spiritual leaders expound these things and retain what you know. Because this kind of like shows like what goes along with this be not unwise. Know what the will of the Lord is. Wisdom accompanies knowing God's will. So it's imperative that we know what the Lord has said, what he's doing. So that, we, and so that we might be familiar with the way that the Lord works. Next I exhort you to, as Brother Gene spoke on, to yield to the will of God. Acts 21, 14. They, they make this statement known. It says, the will of the Lord be done. And Jesus himself said, not mine will, but your will be done. That's like an example of yielding to God's will. Not my will, not, not what I want to happen, but whatever it is you're doing here, that's, that's what I want to be part of. Even the Son of God, he refused to go against the will of God. Always submit to what the Lord says with all humility, sobriety, and godly reverence so that you might please your God and not cause him to be angry with you. If Christ is the, like for an example, if Christ is the one means God's provide for salvation, then to go to another source than Christ, another source other than Christ, would be like kind of trying to go out of God's will. That'd be an example of not yielding. So again, I say, submit. When God says something, when he says he, this is what he wants, yield to it. Don't resist it. Don't go against it. Don't question it. Do it. And that's exactly the very, that's actually the very last thing I want to exhort you with, is that's do the will of the Lord. And there are some expressions in scripture that actually say this. And this one's back in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 6. Well, I'll read verse 5 also. Concerning servants and masters, servants be obedient to them that are your masters according to the flesh with fear and trembling and singleness of your heart as unto Christ, not with eye service as men pleasers, but as servants of Christ doing the will of the Lord from the heart. Doing the will of the Lord. There's that expression. Another similar expression is found in the book of First John. This is chapter 2, verse 17. And this reads, And the world passed away the lust thereof, but he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. So there's two examples right there of do, like it actually says it, doing the will of God. This you could say, this is like the result of submitting. Like what comes with submitting to God's will is actually doing what he says. A servant who submits to his master is going to do what his master says. Likewise, we do as our master says. Now some examples of, do, uh, uh, some examples of doing the will of God. This one's found in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 3. It says, This is the will of God even your sanctification, that ye should abstain from fornication. See, that's one example right there. Something God wills and he tells you, do it. Also in the book of Romans, chapter 2, chapter 12, verse 2, there's another example of this. It says, Be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. The latter text shows that the will of God, it's actually kind of, dem it's demonstrated to others in us. People, like, so when we look at each other, we're seeing God's will, like, actually demonstrated, worked out in our own selves. If God, so, you're actually seeing, that's like a way you see the will of God accomplished, by seeing others submit to that will, and you are submitting to it also. So if God says to do something, the fact that it's his will to do so, that's enough reason to motivate us to perform the things that he says and what he desires. In the end, God's will is all God accomplishes. 
Let us keep this in mind so that we may li- the way we live might be in harmony with that will. That's my exhortation to you. We open now for your 